Good morning. It is April 5, 2023. This is the uh, day that we have a couple of uh, work sessions, and then that's followed by council time, and that is followed by a couple of executive sessions. So we clearly need to get busy. I'd like to begin, though, by asking if there's any change to the agenda this morning. We, we don't have um, any changes to the work session, but we'll, there will be a couple suggested changes for council time, which we can do at the beginning of the council time meeting. Okay, very good. We will do that. And um, with that, it's time for public comment. This is on the agenda. No. We're starting our work session. I'm trying to jump ahead <laughs> into council time. Sorry about that. Um, so it's uh, time to uh, start in with population projections. And we look forward to the staff report on that. Jose, Jackie, and Paul. Good morning, council. This is Jackie Camp with Clark County Community Planning Program Manager. Um, Jose and Paul and I are here this morning to give a presentation in preparation for your upcoming hearing uh, related to the uh, comprehensive plan update and the population projection for the 20 year population for 2025 to 2045. Um, I'm here playing Oliver's part this morning. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn it over to Jose and, uh, and Paul to kick off the presentation. Thank you so much. Chair, real quickly, sorry to interrupt. I was just wanting in terms of process, are we going to be asking questions as the slides progress or are we going to have pauses that staff suggests and answer at that time? There's a lot of content here and I just wanted to clarify. I would prefer the latter so that it doesn't go for too long a period. Staff, do you have a preference? Um, I think, how about you? No, I think if, we, if you want to stop for questions, that's fine. If we go to the next slide, um, maybe we can break. Um, Paul, could you go to the next slide? Jose, if we stop for questions and it becomes too uh, lengthy, I'm going to say so, and we will regroup. If you, if that is uh, okay, I will let that be known. So, um, yes. okay, go ahead, please. Yeah, and this is Thank this you. is Paul, um, and I. Yes, there is a lot of content, and I think it would be good to stop for questions uh, with certain. Uh, we just said that we would. Okay, thank and you. That I will stop the discussion if it becomes too, too protracted. Thank you. Okay, so um, uh, good morning, counselors. Uh, Jose Alvarez with Clark County Community Planning. Um, so the overview for the presentation, Paul and I are going to go back and forth. Um, but we're going to review some of the historic population data, uh, the yearly growth rate since that should be 2001, and you'll see that in the slide. Some of the past projections and how that compares to the census numbers, um, and then the the new projection numbers that we've received from uh, OFM that's forecasting out to 2045, and then the connection with um, House Bill 1220. Uh, between the population and housing that was discussed a little bit um, in the presentation from Commerce last week, and then a discussion uh, to confirm next steps and uh, sort of an overview of the process. Um, and then if there's any additional comments and questions, we'll take those at that time. Next slide. All right. And I can take it from here. This is Paul Newman. Uh, I serve as the county's demographer and I'm also in the GIS group. What we're looking at uh, is a chart of growth in Clark County from 2001 to 2022. Um, I'd like to make a step back and make a few comments about this first. Um, in this discussion, we will frequently be talking about or referencing OFM. OFM is the state of Washington Office of Financial Management and they are the source, they have a, a group of demographers that provide uh, yearly estimates and also projections used in the growth management plan. So you will be hearing uh, OFM uh, referenced frequently 
And I just want to make sure that that's that's understood. Um, these projections are for the full county cities and unincorporated areas together. And uh, so. Looking at this, I'd like to point out uh, there are 2 things being communicated here in this graph. Uh, 1 on the left, if you notice the, uh, well, the blue bars correspond to, correspond to the left axis. Represent the number of people added each year. So, for example, in 2007. I, uh, can you see my mouse? I don't. Okay, well, at the bottom, the bottom of the year are the years. Uh, and uh, so at 2007, follow the blue bar up and you see that corresponds with 8,000 people. Added that year to Clark County. Uh, that also looking at that that same year. Uh, we see that it had a 1.97% growth from the previous year. Uh, the growth was declining. From 2006, but. It's, it's still, the county is certainly growing, just at a slower pace. Uh, another notable item on this chart is that the, certainly the steep decline that uh, reaches a low point at 2010. Uh, that's likely an impact of the Great Recession that started in 2007, 2008. And then you see the great uh, continuing to climb uh, through the years forward. Again, this is the, you know, the, the total population of the county continued to grow throughout this time, just at varying levels of speed. The uh, overall, the low point added was 1500 people at the highest point uh, back in 2002, about 12,600 people were added. So, but again, that regarding this, this graph, the point is, gives you a picture of what the growth has been in the past and what the variability can be, especially with uh, economic conditions. There can be certainly high, high points of growth and low, low points of growth. Uh, the next question I'd like to address is, we all know we all know that OFM produces projections over time for the Growth Management Act. What this chart uh, portrays or represents is the historic growth up to 2022. Historic growth, historic population is in this thick <laughs> black line. So this is you know starting from this is in the sense that the total population represented here in the, in the black line, starting from 2000 up to our most recent estimate from 2022. The lines in color are the various projections that OFM has published since the year 2000. They've uh, put out um, five, and uh, you see they're labeled both by color and uh, with regular labels. So, for example, the uh, 2002 projection in green um, represents from about 2000 up till uh, 2025. Um, the takeaway here for me is that, with the exception of 2012, they're all pretty much in line. Uh, again, we see the, the historical population in black takes a dip, takes the growth slows. Uh, likely due to the Great Recession of 2008, uh, then picks up again and re, you know, rejoins the, the alignment with uh, several other projections, just not the 2012. 2012 was likely offset due to the slowdown from the Great Recession. All right, this is a very busy chart, uh, but it uh, I think it responds to some of the questions from our previous meeting last week. So, as mentioned, this is busy. Let's focus on just the middle part. Um, 
it, it again it reviews the projections that OFM has published. Let's just look at the middle four bars, medium series. And what this is showing is that each of these projections um, made a prediction for the year 2020. And so the blue bar is is uh, the 2002. That's when it was published. And that set of numbers included a projection for 2020. So how does that compare to the actual 2020 population that we saw from the US Census? We see that it's, um, you know, the, the red line there is that you know, 503,000 that the census found uh, in its 2020 count. And 2002 and 2007 and 2017 are remarkably close to that census number. Again, I mean, 2002, that was 18 years before the census. So that's that's quite remarkable. 2012, again, is off. Lar largely due, I think, due to the, uh, the slowdown in growth due to the recession. All right, taking a larger view of this graph, we see low on the left and high on the right. Uh, we'll be talking more about this in upcoming slides, but OFM uh, delivers not only a projection, a most likely projection, but they also deliver what they call a, a low band and a high band uh, of, of numbers. And uh, somewhat uh, uncertainty bands that again, we'll talk about more in the few more slides. Uh, you see on the left that all four projections fell well below the, the census in 2020, and on the right, the high band uh, was far above the census, uh, census count of 2020. All right, speaking of census, uh, there's, yeah, this, this is a, a table of numbers that's, I'll walk you through, but it's it, uh, often uh, something like this, uh, need to digest it up digested offline, but I wanted to tie the census together with these OFM uh, numbers, uh, especially for ed current estimates. On uh, this uh, table of census data, uh, it shows the population of Clark County starting back in 1960. Uh, so on the left, you've got the year column, uh, 93,000 in Clark County. Then each decade moving forward, you see the uh, the, new, the updated population, as well as the increase over those 10 years. So from 1970, uh, or actually from 1960 to 1970, 34,000 people were, were added. And this results in a 3.19% annual average growth. So I think all the percentages that I uh, present here are average annual growth. Some of the other charts may have five-year increments in, in the populations that they're showing, but uh, because it's, it's uh, trying to keep th everything on the same page or um, comparing apples to apples, uh, all the percentages are average annual growth rates. Uh, this chart becomes a little easier to digest, or I should say the table, of numbers becomes easier to, to digest when it's charted. So again, this is this is based on the same data uh, as all those numbers in the table of the previous slide. On the left, you see the additional people added, uh, represented by blue bars. As mentioned, uh, 34,000 people were added between 1960 and 1970 onward. The orange line is the average annual growth rate that 10 year span. All right, Jose, do you wanna uh, take up the next two slides, please? Thanks, Paul. Um, so as uh, Paul is saying, the OFM provides uh, counties, uh, these population projections for um, our comprehensive plan updates. And uh, the latest projection 
um, is reflected here um, in the series of high, middle, and low. Just to point out also that the middle projection is the most likely. So um, the data that um, is provided uh, by OFM is this is what they think is most likely to occur. Um, as Paul pointed out, the, the low and the high are sort of um, bands to reflect the uncertainty of um, changes in the economy and some of the assumptions not panning out the way that they expected. Um, the middle projection, just to, I think in the uh, issue paper, we, um, the, the, the term middle is used interchangeably with medium M-E-D-I-U-M um, -E projection, um, and OFM has gone back and forth in using those terms, so those terms are used interchangeably. Um, and as Paul uh, mentioned, uh, the percentages associated with those projections are there in parentheses, um, and that's something that we, um, our demographer estimates, OFM doesn't put out percentages. Um, and then on the next slide, we'll, um, these these forecasts, these projections are from um, 2025 base. And so there are three different base levels. Um, you'll see um, in the middle there. So with the high, well, the high is based on a 586,000 um, base in 2025. Uh, the media, the middle is 543 and the low is 510. Um, OFM starts these projections in five-year increments. So these numbers were, um, when they got the 2020 uh, census numbers, they looked at 2020 to 2025, and that's where they came up with these numbers. We're currently at, one, the last data we have is for um, April 1 OFM number, which is, the 52900. So, um, you know, there's an interpolation between um, our current population and what's going to, um, what the population is going to be in 2025. So it's that increment of growth uh, between 2025 and 2045 is what this is reflecting. And so the high is about uh, 200, just shy of 205,000. The middle is about 155,000, and um, the low is about 66,000, but it's starting with a base lower than our current population. Right. Yeah, and uh, Jose, can I pick it up from here? Sure. Yes. Yeah, the talking further with OFM and, and Mike Mormon, uh, the, the starting points, the, the blue, and the green of the of, uh, high and low are deliberately offset. Uh, I think the high is offset by 8% and the low is offset by 6%, uh, just to give room for uncertainty. Uh, they, they, do, they, they gave the high starting point a, a higher offset uh, of 8% because of Clark County's historic growth rate. But those are, that's that's the. Well, I'll talk more about that in the next slide. It's just important to note that those offsets for the high and low are deliberate, just kind of provide rails, or you might consider them uh, like highway lane lines, more technically uncertainty bands. So I'll move on to the next slide. So remember, so the next slide is extremely busy. So just remember this, this notion of the three bands, the three lines um, projecting upwards. Again, these are actual numbers, these actual people, um, as you see on the left, um, total people. Uh, the next slide reflects the rate of growth of each of these three bands. So let's again kind of focus on the middle line here of that's orange starting in 2020, kind of ignoring the rest. And what's being reflected is the rate of change in five year periods. Uh, 
uh, again, the, you know, the percentage there is, is uh, average annual. But a takeaway here is that um, from well, really down the whole line is that the rate of growth is projected to slow. Uh, starting from, you know, the, the, this 2.15% on above the 2020 bar, uh, that's from the from 2015 to, to 2020. So that's actual growth. Uh, moving forward into 2025, is the growth is projected to slow uh, 2030, 1.42, and so forth. The county is still growing, but just slower. Um, now remember those offsets that we saw for the high and low. That's what this reflects, and I'm not sure how meaningful or this, this steep line from 2020 on the gray line up to 2025 to 3.12. Um, again, that's kind of artificial uh, to just provide those uh, uncertainty bands. Uh, the more important items of the high and low bands are seen here in 2030, uh, where they, like the middle series, slow down, where the, the rate of growth is still there, but the rate of growth is slowing. What's represented in the, in the bars back here, the uh, gray, blue, and darker gray bars are the actual number of people added during those periods, five-year periods. Um, based on the projection and based on the, uh, the particular series. So the dark gray uh, would be the number of people added uh, on the low series. The lighter gray is the higher series number. So um, a significant question here is why are things slowing? So let's look at the, there's, I guess, an academic Demography, there's something called the components of population change. So up here at the title uh, really boils down to births, deaths, and migration. And this, so I'm going to show you two charts. Uh, this first one just focuses on the, really the first two of births and deaths. And again, this is from the projected, actually this is actual, the solid lines are actual up to uh, 2022. And then the dashed lines are projected from OFM. Uh, what, we, what we're seeing are projected births in Clark County are slowing almost, almost uh, to a flat line out by 2050. Deaths in the county are increasing in rate. Uh, not sure about the flat line here between 2025 and 2030 but they certainly do increase uh, over time. Births minus deaths equals natural increase. So really the, the outcome of subtracting deaths from births is this natural increase, which you see uh, declining significantly. There's a little jump here between 20 and, and 2025, um, but uh, it's certainly declining. And the final slide for population, I'm taking the same projected natural increase line that you see declining and mm -hmm. adding it to OFM's projected net migration in the blue dashed lines. So projected natural increase plus projected net migration equals total growth. And this provides the answer of why uh, those previous trend lines are declining. It's, it's that really is the projected natural increase is declining at such a scale that it's causing the, the total growth to decline slowly, but still declining. Uh, that's, that's the end of my portion of this. Are there questions? Sure, I have a question. Go ahead, Councillor. 
So this slide that we're currently looking at, I am struggling to find any reason to, I, I don't see the, I don't see the logic behind this slide. First of all, like we have this steep increase that's, that's currently, that's measurable. And then we have no plateau, no top. And then we're, from this point on, we're projecting a, a, a steep decrease. Like with the, with the uh, natural growth, I totally get that. It makes sense, because that's a matter of, of births versus deaths, and we have trends going that way. But for Clark County, I don't see any trend for migration going any direction other than up. And so where are we getting the, you know, what kind of concepts are we using? What trends are we factoring into projecting that migration is going to drop off and slow down? Right, so that, that question is something that we would have to refer back to OFM. That's just a little bit beyond. I, again, I'm, take, I'm using the OFM numbers. We've had conversations with uh, Mike Mormon at OFM. But that's that's a question. I, I see what you're talking about. It is, uh, but I would need to. We would need to confer with with Mike on that to get a, a clear, authoritative answer on that. Yeah, I would appreciate that because this just literally does not make sense to me. From everything we know, everything we read in the paper, this is a very attractive place to live. And we're drawing people from all over the place. There was a, an article in the Columbia just recently about migration in versus out, and we have a huge positive net on that. So I, I just fundamentally have an issue with this, with this chart here. So really, yeah, especially between the period of uh, 2020 and 2030, yeah, there is a decline in the projected net migration. It picks up after 2030, um, but yeah, so that this 10-year 10, 10 period is, is something we can certainly inquire about. And I'd just like to support um, the counselor in, in that question because that's a really very good question. And if we have to ask OFM how in the world they came up with that, by all means, let's do that. and and uh, have a re just a, a brief report back to us or an email or whatever mm -hmm. explains it because I'm with Councillor Young. Uh, we're not hearing in other venues um, about that great of a, or any really, uh, projected loss in migration. So thank you for, for uh, doing that, Paul. I think that's very central to this chart. All right, will do. Are there any other questions at this point before we get into the next portion of the presentation? Just like to ask a question on the uh, means by which we come to some of the 20 year population uh, projection numbers of medium, high and low. Noting that the, the one chart shows that from 2000 to 2020, there were, was an annual uh, average population growth rate that varied from 3.79 down to 1.7. And yet, when it comes to figuring the 20-year population projection, they've used the number for the medium of 1.26. Where does that come from? Is that factoring in that migration loss to such an extent that it is impacting that number that is designated at the median? So to make sure I understand, uh, you're referring back to the first graph I shared. Like the next one that's on the Excel. I'm sorry, it's not the next one, it's... Um, the one that shows the average annual population growth rate. Oh. On, yes, uh, that, that one right there. Whoops. In red, in red yes. 
well, I was looking at the one up above where it shows 3.79% for 2000. Yes, okay. Uh, this one is so small, I can't read it. So maybe it says the same thing. And then 2.11 for 2010 and 1.7 for 2020. Those numbers certainly don't average 1.26. And yet it says that for the 20 year population projection, the median is 1.26. Where does that number come from? Is that factoring in that migration loss? And that's why the number becomes so low? It's, it's factoring in the natural increase decline. So the, uh, right, we, we get the numbers, the projection numbers from OFM for you know, 2025 onward. And with yearly yearly increases, and the the overall understanding is that you know in migration or net migration will continue, uh, and uh, but it's it's uh, but it's that natural increase. The fact that Well, if that is reflecting the births and the deaths, I'd like to see the math on that. Right. And, you know, it might be that the birth rate is showing what it is showing because of the jobs for the uh, age of population that would normally be having those births. And we have a, a problem with uh, jobs availability uh, for a variety of factors that I, I won't go into right now, but that may be uh, artificially imposed. So anyway, I'd like to see the, the math behind that because, again, that is uh, not computing to me. And when I, I figured in those those numbers, I, I'm not sure how they came up with 1.26. So I would be interested in that. Could you go back up to that slide, Paul? Because there's just something I want to point out, Counselor. Part of this is also a function of the base getting larger. So if um, uh, the previous slide. So if you see um, on 2010, where it's 80,125, and then 2020 is 77,000, so it's about 157,000 people over those two, over that 20 year period. The 1.26 is roughly 155,000 over the 20 year period. But again, we're looking at the rate of change. So that shouldn't. Um... But the rate is going to be the, the, the point of showing the first slide is that the rate is going to change. And as we, we can add the same number of people, but it's going to show a decline in the rate. If that makes sense. Right, if, we, if we're, I think, Jose, if, if I'm understanding, mm -hmm. we generally add about, you know, let's say that we add 8,000 people a year. As the, as the base population grows with that, we can continue to add 8,000 a year, but the percentage declines because it's it's uh, that percentage computation is is based on the the total population. Got it. Well, um, from these numbers that are shown here, if the math could be shared with us as to how they get to the 1.26, that mm -hmm. would be that would be helpful. In, okay. in our understanding, and that's for the, the 20 year period. I understand. Yes. Okay. Yes, we can do that. Chair, if I might add to that as well. Um, when you look at the chart on, on number three, slide three, one of my curiosities is if their numbers for migration were set based on what happened in 2021 20, and 22 because those those are terrible years to use for anything because of the anomaly of the pandemic and if you think about what the pandemic stopped it's that migration 
So, because people hunkered down, they didn't move, they didn't relocate, houses weren't being built. So, I hope that those projections are not built off of those years because to me they they are just a number that can you can put very little weight behind them because of the anomaly of the pandemic. You know, what strikes me is that we're always told, show your work, show your work, show your work. I think that's what we're asking that they do. And that's pretty easy to do once they have already calculated the math. So if show your work could simply be shared, we'll be there. All right, we'll put in that request. Anything else? Jose, do you want to continue with housing? Yes, please. Scroll down. Okay, thank you, Paul. Um, uh, so, uh, House Bill 1220 was a bill that's not codified in several sections of RCW 3670A070. Um, and those are cited in issue paper two, um, and as was discussed uh, by Commerce um, in their presentation last week, um, the there were some changes to um, the state law that requires the county to uh, provide um, uh, housing needs for all segments, economic segments of the population, and uh, broken out by the categories of moderate, low very low and extremely low income. Um, the Department of Commerce is going to be providing um, guidance on how to uh, address that and uh, have provided us some tools with uh, projections at the county level for those uh, housing income segments tied to uh, the population projections from OFM. And I'll be showing you um, th those three charts. Um, the Guidance also includes um, some requirements to provide uh, provisions for moderate density housing options within the urban growth area, um, which includes uh, duplexes, triplexes, and townhouses. And that's sort of being addressed uh, through our housing option study that uh, council uh, reviewed last year and gave us direction to proceed on this year. There um, is also a guidance on reviewing adequate housing, um, again, for those economic segments and making sure that we have sufficient land capacity. Um, and this is based on uh, zoning and regulations um, to encourage incentivize housing. And that would require uh, sort of an expansion of our vacant buildable lands model to um, use zoning where now we um, sort of aggregate based on um, comprehensive plan designations. So we're going to be working with uh, GIS to um, make some updates to that in order to be able to facilitate that look um, by zoning and working with the jurisdictions to get um, sort of density projections by individual zone. Currently, there are the zoning designations um, reflect a range, and so we'll be working with them uh, to sort of uh, narrow that down and, and provide us some updates uh, in order to run the model. Uh, there's also guidance on um, racially disparate impacts, displacement, and exclusion in housing policies and regulations, and uh, that's going to require some additional analysis that we'll be doing in the future. So the next slide, please. So this is the um, housing for all planning tool, HAPT. Um, and this is um, the tool developed by Commerce that it's for all, juris all county jurisdictions. Um, and you can select the county on the left there on the three steps, uh, select a projection year, and then the, tar the target um, population. And um, this is reflecting the low OFM population. Um, so that's highlighted there in yellow, the 576, 151, and the amount of uh, net new housing 
that's needed um, to 2045, which is that 54,000 uh, figure. And then it's that's further broken out by the different categories of uh, low, um, low to medium income, the zero to 30%, 30 to 50, 50 to 80, and 80 to 100. Um, The next slide is going to show the, um, the same information, but for the uh, middle projection using the 698,416 from OFM. Um, and this works out to roughly 107,000 new units. Um, and again, this is from 2020 to 2045. Um, so it's a little different than the population projections that are 2025 to 2045. So there's be some discount there. Um, and the sort of sub 80% um, housing needed is, is roughly 49% of the new housing um, um, need is gonna be that sub 80% um, area median income. The next slide, please. And then the um, the high OFM population projection um, is the 791 number, and this shows a need for 147,000 um, new housing units um, in total. And the and the new. Uh, under sub, under 80% is around 45% of the total. Are there any questions on these um, projections? Questions, Council? Yes, I have one quick question. When we're using these tools and these numbers, are we factoring in the, the current shortage of housing that has been being discussed in the, in the recent past? Uh, yes, um, well, if, um, the Department of Commerce does, um, they, they provide that estimated, um, they, they estimate what the 2020 is, and in their projections out there trying to um, provide enough housing um, to make up for that shortage. I think they're including a 6% vacancy rate um, also, um, but I can get you more detail on that, but they are trying to make up for that um, shortage and the deficit that currently exists. Okay, also, so it is including that. Sorry. Yes. Go ahead. It may be right here before us, but I'm not seeing it. What is the number of units per person that is tabulated in here as what would be needed? or number of units per thousand population, however they prefer to code it? Um, well, so I, we can um, estimate based on the numbers there. I think it, um, when I looked at that, it was a, a it was working out to 2.33 uh, persons per housing unit, which is a little bit lower than what we have used um, historically for a person's per household assumption, um, which has been about 2.66. So um, that's another way of getting at um, more housing. The lower the person's per household, lower. Mm -hmm. um, and is, is it the same for those by demographic group? By lower, lower AMI? versus higher. Yeah, I think that's constant throughout. I don't think there's any difference hmm. in terms of their projections. I, in terms of what is actually there, I'm not sure. I don't know that hmm. they distinguish that. Interesting, okay, thank you. Chair? Yes, go ahead. Yes, I have a question. On page 13, uh, you met in brackets, there's a mention of expansion of the vacant buildable land model. Um, could you elaborate on that and what the process might be in if there's changes to the vacant buildable land model? I know so, we had a task force pulled together to initially uh, develop that and I wondered if uh, 
if that what what is envisioned okay so the way the model currently works is that it um it has a assumption uh, by density um for urban low and urban high so it um sort of aggregates all the different zoning um residential zoning um r15 through r120 um and makes an assumption that there'll be six units per acre that will um, achieve and in the urban high it assumes that it'll be 20 or 22 units per acre and so these those are sort of aggregate numbers and what we want to do is refine that and to show for each of the zones within the urban low, the R15, R16, R175, R120, what the, um, what the capacity is and what the density actually is in those zones. So it's really refining the model and getting more detail. Because um, at this point, it's more a, a, of an aggregate. And so that's what I mean by the expansion of the vacant buildable lands model. Does that answer Thank the question? You. Well, and, and I wonder about the process too. Is this something we'll be bringing people back together to wrestle with? Well, we were um, working with our GIS to technically do that and then get the, um, the density numbers from the respective jurisdictions for each of those zones. And then we will um, have an updated capacity analysis and we'll bring that back to council um for your um approval but it's going to be driven mostly by the the cities um and and the technical exercise and then when it's done we'll put it out for review um see if anyone has any any reason to to change that great thanks chair i've got one more question go ahead councillor young so the, you know, the conversation and um, thank you for your uh, kind of introducing that information. So when we talked about the 1.2%, 1.26%, I also saw that and, and my initial thought is my wonder how, why we would be suggesting our growth rate would be lower than it ever has been. And I appreciate that comment about the percentage dropping as the the population increases. And this actually brings up an interesting issue. And I'm wondering, um, because if, if population trends go by number, if you would look at a population graph over the years, it should be a pretty lineal straight line. But if it goes by percentage, it would be a curve. And so the population would kind of go like this. And so I'm curious, do we have that graph available and, or could we make one just to see, you know, whether that, that increase is, you know, over a decade, you have 500 or 100,000 increase over the next day, you'd have 100,000 versus over one decade, you have this percentage over the next decade, you have this, that percentage. So I'd be interested in seeing that if we could make that available, that would be helpful to see because I, I struggle with the, the notion that there would be like a lineal graph, that there wouldn't be, it seems to me the percentage would be a better way to base it than population, but uh, that information would help me to understand that better. Okay. Do you have anything, Paul? I'm so the uh, counselor to understand the this uh, graphic. Oops. does show a fairly straight line lineal uh, based, based on OFM's projection, especially the, the uh, 
middle series. So uh, on okay, the way I understood the question is slide three. Okay. So this shows both the actual population number for those years and the change in percentages each year. Is, is that what you were getting at, Counselor? Is the blue, the blue bar the actual, there is the population, population increase in numbers? Yes. 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 Okay. Yeah, that's... Uh, that's what I was looking at. And in, in general, if you take the pandemic years out of there, you see it kind of go in this direction. So that is, yeah, that's helpful. That that should give me what I need. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Jose, should we go back to where you left off? Yes, yeah, slide 17, please. Okay, so uh, this is just the next steps in the population projection discussion. We had the um, information session uh, last week, uh, March 28th. Uh, we're having the work session today. Um, we're going to share this information with the planning commission uh, also tomorrow. Um, and with the cities, we have a technical coordination committee meeting. Um, and then the hearing is slated for April 18th. Um, and then in uh, July, we'll be looking at the employment projection. Uh, we'll be getting that from the Employment Security Department and Scott Bailey. Um, we'll get that information and share that with the um, the technical the technical coordinating committee, the the planning commission and work session, and the council in July and then having a hearing July 18th to uh, sort of adopt that employment projection. Um, and then we can move towards um, the population allocation um, after that. And after in August, September, I think we're going to come back with council and um, go over a, the vacant bill of lands model to provide, provide an overview of that. I think that um, concludes the presentation. If you have any additional questions, go to the next slide, Paul. Are there questions, Council? Chair, I don't have any more questions, but I do just have a comment. You know, I think this is something that we need to remove politics from completely and just be very honest and do our very, very best to get this right because this is critical for our county. If we don't plan for enough growth in our county, then two things happen. People live here and don't have a home to live in. Or the other option is, and we talked about migration earlier, that we have a finite amount of places for people to live and money determines who can live here. And so that migration would continue to come in from areas that have more money than Clark County residents do and our own residents would get displaced. So we don't wanna to have too many, we don't wanna plan for too much, but it's critical that we don't short ourselves on this or we're gonna end up in a real bad situation as a county as a whole and I don't wanna see that. So just wanted to make that comment, thank you. Thank you for that. Any other comments or questions? Okay, I believe that concludes this particular work session in that event. And we will see you tomorrow probably at the Planning Commission uh, for those of us who tune in to that. And then uh, on April 18 for the council hearing. And that's what lies ahead for council, correct? Okay, very good, thank you. And now uh, Kathleen, 
I would like to check with you that we are moving to the 2020.